how to get your first coaching client. So what is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going over how you can get your very first coaching client in today's market. We are going to be going over my top 10 favorite ways that I still will get coaching clients into my businesses. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe down below as there is so much content coming for you guys to help you grow your coaching business. Number one, defining and refining your client avatar. This is so important in your coaching business. So you know who your ideal client is and the type of person that you want to be marketing your services to. I, for many years, did not do that. I did not even think about gee, I wonder who my ideal client is. And it wasn't until actually I learned it from Russell Bronson years ago, I want to say at least five, it's been five or six years now, where he started speaking about your client avatar and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Why wasn't I doing this for the longest? So that is why it is number one, because you really need to understand the market that you are going to be going after and the client, excuse me, that you really want to market to. Now I am giving away my client avatar worksheet for you to really narrow down who your ideal client is. You can get your hands on that. If you just go over to my Instagram, give me a follow and DM me and I will send you that worksheet for free. Make sure you stay all the way to the end because number 10 is the exact method on how I got my first, very, very first coaching client. Number two is creating valuable content. So this is something that I say to my coaching clients all the time, and that is in sales, you really want to make sure that you are giving value before anything else. You always want to make sure in business, in sales, in your coaching business, you want to give everyone value before you ask or even accept the sale. This is one thing that you really need to understand if you are going to have a successful and sustainable coaching business. Now, there's plenty of ways on doing that. Right now, I am in front of you. I am giving you free, valuable advice. Now, that doesn't mean that every single one of my viewers is going to turn into clients, but this is also a passion of mine and a great avenue just to build trust with my viewers and potential clients down the road. So YouTube videos, Instagram, TikTok, making your content as valuable as possible so that way you can really build trust and also build authority in your specific niche because now your viewers and potential clients are seeing that you really know what you're talking about. Number three is your competitor's audience. Now, I know that this can be a little tricky for some people, you know, where they'll say, oh, but you're, you know, you're spamming and you're scamming other people, not really scamming, but you're just spamming people's accounts. This is a business. We all do it. When you're running ads, you will, um, you know, choose a specific person that you might want to target their audience for. It's the same exact thing. Now, that doesn't mean to come off very spammy. And even on social platforms, they only let you do so much on a platform a day. So you really need to be careful on how you are utilizing the platforms and what you're doing. But going into your competitor's audience and really being able to target a specific audience and an audience that is already interested in the services that you are providing is going to get you to your first client because you are now targeting people that are already interested in what you have to sell brings me to number four, and that is cold DMs and reaching out to old prospects. 
So in the DMs is really where you can start building a connection with people. And this is the best way after you have checked out your competitor's audience and you see some people that are really avid on their pages, you can start now targeting them, but not just targeting them in the way of, okay, I'm just going to give them a follow and like their post. You are now going to start sending people cold DMs to get that conversation started with them, to build a connection, to build a rapport, okay? After that, in the DMs, you're going to start hitting up some old prospects. Now, what are old prospects? Prospects are really anyone that can turn into or is a lead. It can turn into a client. So maybe a couple of months ago, someone hit you up on one of your very first posts like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. Thanks so much. You're going to start now DMing and reopening that chat, even with some of your older prospects, because again, in the DMs is really where you can just connect with people and a great way to start getting some leads and your first initial clients. Number five is offering a mini course. So offering mini courses are great in the coaching really industry and really for anything, right? How many times, even at Costco, you'll get free samples and then all of a sudden you're walking out with two boxes of whatever you just sampled. Free stuff, everybody loves free stuff. And this is a great way for you to showcase how amazing your services are and why people should buy them and why they're going to want more, right? Or not why they're going to want more, but it leads them to want more. So offering a free mini course is an amazing way to get your first coaching client because you are giving them just a little piece of the pie and it's going to end up making them want the whole pie. So offering a free mini course. And if you're not on any type of platform, I use Kajabi. Kajabi link is always in my video description. You can take a look at it if that's a platform that you want to get onto. But even if you don't have a course, then just offering some type of free service, maybe giving them a half hour of your time for free, giving them a free half hour of services. I always offer my clients an hour call. So that is something that I always offer my clients. It really just helps build rapport. They can understand a little bit more about the stuff that I am you know, offering, my services that I am offering, what I can provide for them and then they can make an informed decision if they'd want to work with me or not, right? And you can book your call down in the video description as well if you're really thinking about scaling your coaching business and you want to invest in your business. So offering some type of free service to really get those clients wanting more is a great opportunity for you to get your first clients and all of your clients throughout your entire business. Number six is niche down and bridge the gap from listening to your audience's feedback. So this is super important. Having a service that people really want is what is going to help you sell. And this is something that a lot of beginners miss the mark on. They offer services and they're like, well, this is what it is. And they don't really listen to the feedback of their audience, whether it be on YouTube, whether it be on Instagram, where it's, yeah, I would love to learn more about this. Or, hey, in that mini course, you know what was really interesting? X, 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 Y, and Z, right? And really taking that feedback and then niching down even more and having an even more targeted audience to really give them services that they are looking for. When you start doing this, it's an absolute game changer in your business and will start bringing in a lot more clients, not even just that first client. Number seven is exchanging your services for a review. Now, you obviously want it to be an honest review, but having feedback and positive feedback from past clients and having the authority 
in your niche absolutely helps with converting new clients. So in the beginning, when you are just starting out, offering your services, now it doesn't have to be your full services, right? Where, you know, my services are a three month coaching program with my clients. Now, in the beginning, I did not give the full 90 days. I would do 30 days or maybe even just two weeks for them to really see exactly what I'm doing, but still giving them enough information that they still can benefit from it. And then asking for some positive feedback and reviews on how they felt about my product services and the coaching that I offered. So that is a great way in the beginning to start getting clients and your first initial client is having some type of testimonial about your services to build trust within your niche and your business. So number eight is hiring help. Now I know in the beginning, if you are starting out a brand new business, some of you may be on a budget, some of you may not be on a budget. But one thing that I have always realized, and because it's happened to me, is when you are really determined about something, you will become very resourceful to find the means to get to X to get to your goal. And as a business person, as an entrepreneur, I think we all have that grit and we all need that grit to really have a successful business. So finding someone to help you out and grow your business is a must. When I first started out, I cannot tell you how much money I had spent and got help and educated myself and and did research and, and invested in myself and in my businesses. And I will still do that till this day if I feel that I am going to get some type of value and it's going to help my business. So definitely do not shy away from finding people that can help you scale. Now, would I love that person to be me where I can help you grow your business? Absolutely. There is at least somebody out there that will help you and you really should be investing in your business to grow and scale. Number nine is networking. So this is a great way to scale your business, but not even just scale your business, even from the beginning to get that first initial client, because you really want to make sure that you are getting in front of as many eyes as you possibly could. Now, how are you going to do that? Networking on Instagram if you're on Instagram, networking on TikTok if you're on TikTok, networking on YouTube if you're on YouTube. Finding people that are within your niche and networking with them, doing content with them, possibly going on a live with them. Now, please understand that if you, let's say, have 5K on Instagram and you are trying to network with someone who has maybe 250K, you really are kind of falling into an area where they might not even respond or reject your request. Now that does not mean that it's an official they're not going to, but finding someone that is kind of within your follower count, unless you can obviously really be able to pitch the networking and collab, I should say, to the higher count person because you know that you'll be able to give their audience value. But if not, what I always recommend and what I did in the beginning, if I only had 500 followers, I would look for somebody that was within 500 to a 3K follower range. And then every time I grew, I would just look for other people to collab with that was within that range. So networking is a great way and doing collabs is a great way to really be able to get yourself in front of a newer audience and be able to really market your services in front of some fresh eyes. So number 10, this was the foolproof method on how I got my very first coaching client when I had just started out. And that is Facebook groups. They are so powerful, guys. I cannot even explain how well I did in Facebook groups. And let me tell you something, I will still pop up in Facebook groups once in a while when I really want to like 
exceed my quota for the month, okay? They are so great in building trust, building rapport, and really getting yourself and your services in front of so many people and a, a specific audience that is so targeted to what you are doing. So in the beginning, I first started out with spiritual coaching, and that is what I would, um, you know, kind of target. I was in a lot of spiritual groups. Now you cannot be spammy or, you know, scammy in these groups. You do have to follow the group rules. But what I would do is I would just answer a lot of questions in, you know, the comments. And then I would comment on, on people's comments in a comment section. Like I would really be in there where I'd be like, you know, what really helped me this, 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 and this. And then I used one of like my most simplest, but secret techniques that really helped me like release this or, you know, got to X or, you know, it really opened up my chakra when I did, you know, a specific method. And then I would say like, if you really want that method, just DM me and I will give you a breakdown of exactly what I did. This is an amazing way to get people again into those DMs, build a connection, build trust, build a rapport. And this is how I ended up getting my first initial clients. And this is how, kind of what I, I did for a really long time until I started my own methods on Instagram that completely like a hundred X my businesses. And I, that is what I did. And it really really gets results. Now I wasn't charging what I'm charging now. So you do have to take that into consideration that these, you know, a lot of the times in the Facebook groups, these aren't, I would necessarily say other entrepreneurs or maybe people that are, could just, you know, could only stay on a specific budget. But especially in the beginning, I, you know, was charging the lowest amount I possibly could just to get my few clients into the door. So make sure you do that. Another thing to do is almost kind of like a shameless plug post um, in these groups. So I am in specific groups right now where I will say, Hey guys, I just, you know, I, I didn't want, I don't want to show off or anything, but I just want to show you my results on what I am getting now after I switched one simple thing. And I will just, that's all I will say. I will not sound very salesy. I will not, you know, you know, spam or look scammy or anything. That is all I will say is if I'm just another member, you know, person to person, friend to friend, just letting them know and showing them some great results that I got. Your DMs will be flooded with that if, if the group is very active and it's a larger group. But even if it's not, all of these people are in these groups for the most part because they are looking for some type of solution or they are interested in that specific topic. So Facebook groups are for me the best way to get your first initial coaching client. All right, so that brings us to the end of my top 10 ways for you to get your first coaching clients into your coaching business. Now, if you feel that I missed a few things out, please comment down below, give us some of your tips as we are all here to help each other out and grow as there is enough room for all of us at the table. So please again, subscribe down below. If you want that client avatar worksheet, reach out to me on Instagram and until next time guys, bye.